welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be ranking my ABH eyeshadow palette collection. I have six of them, so let's see. I have got Sultry, I have Subculture, Soft Glam, Modern Renaissance, Norvina, and the Jackie Ina palette. Now I have not pre-ranked these, so oftentimes before I sit down to film, I go through whatever it is that I'm going to be talking about and I gather things and if I'm doing a ranking video, which I haven't done in a very long time, but if I'm going to do something of that nature, I pre-rank it so that you don't have to watch the struggle, the hemming and the hawing. But today I thought, why not make you watch that? <laughs> why not? Uh, just so that it's a little bit, I don't know, more relatable or something or a little more transparent in terms of the process and so that I can sort of share my thought process with you because I think everybody's going to have a different way of approaching this kind of thing where you're ranking eyeshadows. Luna just entered the room. You can always tell when those lights are going, it's because she's sitting down or walking out as the case may be. Away she goes. Okay, so... What I think we're going to try to do is go from the bottom up to the top. I do have an idea already in mind of what I think the number one palette is, in my opinion, um, but everything else in the middle is a little bit more murky. So there are two contenders for sixth place as far as I'm concerned. Those would be Norvina and Subculture. The issue with Subculture is just the blendability of it. So. The color story, I think, is absolutely stunning. I really love it for fall, winter. I think it's very different from a lot of the different palettes on the market, and I think there's a lot of just beautiful shades in here. The problem I find with this is not so much the fact that it's a pressed pigment. It's not so much that the blendability is difficult for each individual shadow, which, to be honest, it can be. This is a palette that requires finesse. This is not what I'd consider to be a beginner-friendly kind of palette. You have to use a little bit and really take your time with it. My issue with it is that once you start blending certain colors, it gets very murky. So for example, if you are blending this mustard yellow in with say this deep maroon, or even in with this really deep teal over here, where those two shadows meet becomes like this brown murky mess. And so I find that when I'm using this palette, I have to sort of stick with like a, a monochromatic kind of feel. So I would use like this green with the deep teal and maybe blend out with this lighter green over here or go for the yellows and oranges all together just so that you don't get any of that like cross contamination, if you will. I will say this shade up here, Cube, does not fit the rest of the palette. When I initially looked at it, I thought it was just going to be like a shimmery sort of champagne color, but it has a very strong pink shift to it that just doesn't complement the rest of the colors that are in here. So that is the subculture palette. Moving over to Norvina, it's obviously a very different color story. You've got a lot of pinks and purples. It's almost like a periwinkle purple over here, and it is ultimately very different. So you're kind of comparing apples and oranges here in terms of color story. So where I want to look at it is in terms of usability and diversity, if you will. And for me, in terms of looking at that, I would have to say that subculture brings a little bit more to the table than Norvina. So when I'm looking at it in terms of trying to figure out the ranking of it, I'm going to go from the approach of like, what is the diversity in each palette and you know, what is the opportunity for creating different looks? Like I'm going to look at it from the performance aspect rather than the color story aspect, because all of these I picked because I liked the color story of each of them individually. And I don't really think it's necessarily fair to rank just on colors because that's, I don't know, I just don't think it is. Anyways, <laughs> when I look at the Norvina palette, I think that there was some missed opportunity with this. I think it really kind of hits along one note, if you will, like not from a color perspective, for, but from a depth of color, if that makes sense. Like 
The top row is all shimmer shadows and the only dark one you have is over here. The bottom row is all mattes and there really aren't any deep shades in here. I would prefer that this shade be a matte rather than a shimmery shadow. So I just find that there's not a lot of dimension that you can create with this. I think if there had been a really deep eggplant purple or a really deep maroon, something along those lines, I think it would have just created that much more diversity in this palette. And so for that reason, I'm going to rank Norvina as number six and Subculture, despite the fact that it can be quite finicky to work with, I'm gonna rank that one as fifth. So before I really start scratching my head about this, I'm just gonna share with you the other four. So this one here is Modern Renaissance, and this one here is Soft Glam. And over on this side, we have the Jackie Ina palette, and then Sultry over here. When I look at them, Soft Glam and Modern Renaissance appear to be related. They look rather similar, although there are clearly differences, but they do look rather similar to each other. Uh, so, let me... And this is where the hemming and hawing starts. Um, <laughs> well, I will point out, now that I've said that they look quite related, I see at least three overlap shades in these palettes. So um, this shade here, Tempura, is the same as this one, also Tempura. There is Burnt Orange here and Burnt Orange here. <laughs> and then as well, Cypress Umber and Cypress Umber over here. So there is actually overlap to a rather significant degree here. Uh, between these two palettes. So when I look at the four of them opened up, I think when I'm looking at third and fourth, it's going to be between these two here. So if I look at it, again, keeping in mind that I'm looking at functionality more so than just the colors contained within each, if it was just the color story, Modern Renaissance would edge out uh, Soft Glam. But if I'm looking at the looks that I can create and what I actually enjoy working with, I, I think I've got to rank Modern Renaissance as number four. And for me, it's only because there are so many matte shadows in there. I know a lot of people love matte shadows. I don't mind matte shadows, but I don't tend to gravitate towards all matte looks. So this one only has uh, about three three, two, oh, an antique bronze, I guess. So this one only has like two shimmery shadows. Um, antique bronze is sort of a crossover between a matte and a shimmer. It's not quite matte, it's not quite shimmery, if that sort of makes sense. Um, so it's just these two in here that are sort of metallic shades. Um, and when I'm doing looks, I like to have something more shimmery. So Soft Glam offers a wider variety of those kind of shadows and of that finish. I also like that in this one, there is the black as well as that deep sort of rusty kind of color. I think it just gives different options for really deepening up the looks as well as Cypress Umber over here. Whereas with Modern Renaissance, your only really deep option is Cypress Umber. I love this shade here and I love this one up here, but on the whole, I think that there are more shades that I like in this palette than in Modern Renaissance and I think this one is more diverse for me at any rate and my personal preferences. So again, number four is Modern Renaissance and number three is Soft Glam. And then there were two. And I said at the beginning that I had a good idea what was going to end up in the top spot, and I don't think that's necessarily changed, but I'm going to drag this out a little bit and make you look at both of them. <laughs> so, um, the same kind of idea applies here in terms of how I would view this. It's really looking at the functionality of it. So if we look at the Jackie Ina palette, there are a lot of deeper options in here. Completely makes sense. Jackie Ina is a woman of color. She designed and selected the colors for this, so it would make sense that they would be deeper. 
But that's not to say that it's unworkable for somebody who has my kind of skin tone. They do show up deeper and darker. I use a lighter hand and I blend my butt off when I use this palette. There are some incredibly beautiful shades in here. For example, Trust Issues, Wigglies. I know that that one was quite controversial because of its name, but I'm not here to comment on that. Uh, Zam and Sponsored. You will notice that I've picked all shimmers in here as some of my favorite shades, and that kind of ties into my thoughts on modern renaissance. So let's go ahead and swatch them over here. So this is Zam, followed by Wigglies, Trust Issues, and Sponsored. And they are so pretty. This shimmery red shade, oh my goodness, like, it's so beautiful. I don't think I have anything else like that, to be honest. I really don't. But at any rate, there are some very, very pretty shades in here. And I love that there's a whole range. Like, there's still, I don't want to say like a strong color story here. Like, it's not just like a spectrum of purple or anything like that. But these shades do play really well with each other and nothing really stands out as being out of place. So I think it is a very cohesive and coherent palette and for that reason I just really like it. So it goes into the second spot. So that means that Sultry is number one. And it astounds me that Sultry was limited edition <laughs> because it's such a classic staple neutral palette and it is absolutely beautiful. I remember when the first pictures came out of this, because this was released I think holiday last year, 2018, I remember looking at it and being like, boring, and then I saw it in stores and swatched it and was like, and add to cart, you're coming home with me, because it's phenomenal. It is so, so beautiful. This pink, like this corally shade here, always struck me as looking a little off, but what it does is it brings out those warmer elements in some of the other shadows, and I think it's just, it's just a really pretty addition. Unexpected, but a very pretty addition. These, like the shade Cyborg, oh my god, it's so pretty. It is so beautiful, like this like bright pewtery shade, like it's not quite silver, but it's not taupe, like it's just, it's like a grown-up silver. I don't know how to describe it. Like it just, it has a certain amount of depth to it, but it's so, so beautiful. And this is one of those palettes that every time I wear it, I develop a crush on my eye makeup and I, it like, it hurts my soul to wash it off at the end of the night. So that is my number one palette that I have from ABH. And I really think that they should have made this a permanent fixture because it is gorgeous. And also the packaging, Stunning. Top notch. All this like sparkliness going on here. It just speaks to the crow that dwells within my soul. I know some people had said that they noticed that the glitter rubs off, but like, like there's like three pieces of glitter if I rub that hard. So I haven't had an issue of like tapping it and like glitter falls off or anything like that. It is quite sturdy and I much prefer this to like the felted packaging that's on like the more OG palettes from her, uh, just because these show every little mark and it's impossible to clean them. I will say as well though, the Jackie Ina packaging is really gorgeous as well. It's like this iridescent, like fake snake skin and I'm here for it. So those are my ABH palettes ranked. So once again, in the number one spot, we have Sultry, followed by Jackie Ina, Soft Glam, Modern Renaissance, Subculture, and then Norvina rounding out the bunch here. So now I'm going to turn it over to you in the comments. If you have more than one ABH palette, how would you rank your collection? I'd love to hear from you on that. I know we all have different opinions. We all value different things. Uh, my friend Britt Clark, who you can find here on YouTube as well, and you should go look for her. I will link her down below to make it easy for you. When I've talked with her about it, she would put Soft Glam above Sultry. That doesn't mean that either one of us is wrong. We just have different opinions and that's a okay. So again, I'd love to hear from you down below. 
Also, I can hear my children coming home, so it's good timing because I'm just about to wrap up. Thank you, as always, for taking the time to watch, and I will see you in my next video. Until then, just be a decent human being. Bye for now.